Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Today we are looking at uh, a question on KC related to graphs In the past we looked at uh, a KC question related to uh, the table method and now we will look at this one related to graphs Now if you look at this question, the reaction is in equilibrium in a closed container of volume 4 dm cube at 400 degrees Celsius SO3 plus NO gives you SO2 plus NO2 gas SO3 plus NO is your reactants and SO2 and NO are your products and Delta H is 53,4 kilojoules it's positive so it means that the fourth reaction is endothermic and if the fourth reaction is endothermic it means that the reverse reaction will be exothermic right now looking at the graph the question 3.1 says is asking us 3.1 is the reaction a homogeneous or heterogeneous equilibrium and I've answered that question as we can see that as the reaction goes from left to right that is the forward reaction we see delta H is positive so therefore it is an endothermic reaction Right, part 2, 3.2, the question is <clears throat> Write down the reaction represented by the dotted line and give the value of delta H for this reaction Now, looking at this graph carefully, we see that um, Let's just look at this graph carefully If you look at the, the solid line, it has a beginning at a higher point and if you look at the dotted line here at the bottom you see that the dotted line is zero now if you look at a reaction at the beginning we have only reactants we have SO3 and NO in your reaction vessel so you have SO3 and NO reacting so at the beginning you have something so therefore from there we can deduce that a solid line refers to our reactants So as SO3 reacts with NO, the, the concentration of SO3 and NO gets less and we see that SO2 and NO gets more. So therefore we can say the dotted line refers to the products. So we see in this reaction that the reactants are getting less and the products are getting more and between 5 and 10 seconds we can see that we've reached equilibrium. So the question is write down the reaction represented by the dotted line and give the value of delta H for this particular reaction so from there we can look at what's happening there we are creating the dotted line refers to product right so to answer that question we can say the following we can say 3.2 So, to answer 3.2, we can see that in 3.2, they're asking you what is the represented by the dot line, and we see that our products are getting more. So, we can say that, um, just to write it down, the SO3 is reacting with the NO to produce SO2 for us, because the SO2 is being made, and the NO2 is being made so that is the reaction represented by the dotted line now looking at 3.3 if we take this further 3.3 says 3.3 what is represented by the horizontal path of the graph between 5 and 10 seconds and i've answered that question earlier that when the graph is flat in this case it does not mean that the reaction is finished rather it means that the Equilibrium has been established. Equilibrium has been established. So it represents the equilibrium between five and ten seconds. It does not mean that the reaction is finished because at the, at the when the line is level in this case, we see that this is an equilibrium reaction. An equilibrium reaction tells you that the forward reaction is happening 
and the reverse reaction is happening. And when the graph is in a horizontal line, it just tells us that the equilibrium is established where the rate of the forward and the reverse reaction is taking place at the same rate. Now going further to 3.4, the question is, state what possibly could have happened to the system at the 10th minute. Explain your answer. Now looking at this, we see that at the 10th minute, we see that there's a change. We see that there's a jump. The graph has jumped. Now that jump means that there is a change in the equilibrium. According to Le Chatelier's principle, as you know, we see that the change could be of uh, certain factors. It can be either temperature, pressure, or um, catalyst. <clears throat> and in this particular case, we see that uh, all pressure also could have caused uh, a change in equilibrium. And here we see that in, in our particular example, that um, because the next equilibrium is higher, we say that there was a change in temperature as the most suitable answer for this question. So there was a temperature increase. Temperature increase that caused the disturbance. And because of the height, we see that we have a new equilibrium. 3.4, 3.5. Why is the horizontal part of the graph between the 15th and 20th minute higher than that between the 5th and the 10th minute? The reason being that because at a higher temperature, and if we, uh, we see here that if we have to take the first equilibrium value, then if you just look at this here carefully, the first equilibrium value takes place at this particular rate. And the second, uh, the second equilibrium value takes place at the higher rate. So can we see the rate of the reaction is higher for the new equilibrium? So because of that, we can say that looking back at the question, the question says, why is the horizontal path of the graph between the 15th and 20th minute higher? Then that between the fifth and the tenth minute, we can say that the rate of the reaction is higher. The rate of the reaction is greater due to an increase in temperature. Okay, the next question that we have 3.6. <clears throat> Let me just get a line here so that we don't get con in this demarcate where we are. Okay, coming back 3.6. The question is what is the effect of pressure? What is the effect of pressure increase on the equilibrium of SO2? Now, if you look at this question, we know that pressure is, uh, will affect the equilibrium, the KC value, actually not the KC value, pressure affects the equilibrium, where an increase in pressure will favor the side with more modes, and a decrease in pressure favors the side with less modes. Now, if you look at this reaction, SO3 on this side, we see that uh, the SO3, I just look at this again. Um, just erase some of this in the way. If you look at the the reaction uh, mixture, we see that there's one SO3 here and there's one NO here. So the number of moles on the left are two. And if you look at the, at the product side, there's one SO2 here and one NO2 here. So the moles on the right are two. So the moles on the left and the moles on the right are the same. So from there we can deduce that pressure will not affect uh, or, uh, an increase or decrease in pressure will not affect the rate of the reaction. So come looking at the question, what is the effect of pressure increase on equilibrium of SO2? There will be no effect. And the reason that there is no effect is because there are no, the, the moles on the left and the moles on the right are the same. Okay. 3.7. A catalyst is added to the system at 20 minutes. Now, looking at this here, 20 minutes is we are here. 
um, redraw the graph from the 15 minute interval and show how the catalyst will affect the system. So I, I won't be redrawing the graph, but just to show you how the catalyst looks when, when we add the catalyst, what happens is both the forward and the reverse reaction take place at an equal rate. So the reaction will go like this. And you'll see that the other reaction goes like this. So that's 3.7's answer. Where both the forward and the reverse reaction take place at an equal rate, so they will both go up equally.